testing, I test them. Hallelujah. 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 What number, bro? Hallelujah. Test it, test it, test it, test it. Three. Test it, test it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time, God. We just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together once again, God, for another youth night, God. As, as much as we love the glow up, God, we love the lights, God, we just thank you for allowing us to gather to worship you together, Lord. We just thank you for this time, this opportunity. Have your way, God. Use me as you see fit, Lord. May your word go unhindered tonight. And I give you all the glory and the praise for it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Love not the world too. Love not the world too. Everybody can see the TV. Mm-hmm. It's a blessing, man. Let's get into it. It's a blessing. Let's get into it. You have to be in the dark. Somebody say the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment. The greatest commandment. Let's get straight into it. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. Am I blocking anybody? Y'all can see you, right? Mark chapter 12, verse 28. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, The most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel. The Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment. I'm going to say that again. No other commandment is greater than these. Let's get into it. What we got here? Oh, pop quiz! Pop quiz! Uh oh, pop quiz! What's up? What's up? Let's see what we got. What four things must we love the Lord with? Is it a heart, mind, toes, and soul? That sounds right. Is it B heart, mind, soul, and strength? Is it C heart, strength, soul, and spirit? Or is it D Hard strength, soul, and TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. Which one is it, Charlie? Who, who are we picking? C. 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 Is it C? C. Who, who knows that? Who we calling on? Who's that back there at the hand? Brother James? What? Mm-hmm. Nah, we're going to pick James. <laughs> B. B. Is she right, you guys? Yes. Yeah. Y'all agree? Yeah. All right. Come up and get your prize. Heart, mind, soul, and strength. I help. Good job. Good job. Heart, mind, soul, and strength. Let's get into it. Someone say, "Do not love this world." Do not love this world. Do not love this world. She's like, um, so, uh, <laughs> where's my bag? <laughs> like, pass me my bags, right? I'm sorry. She's like, she walked down the aisle like, sorry, uh, good job. I mean, you didn't have your hand up to her. <laughs> okay, I apologize. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. What we got? Pop quiz. They're popping up quick. They're popping up quick. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Let's get into it. What three things are in the world? Is it A, lust of the head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Is it B? Lust of the eyes, the mind, and the pride of life? Is it C? 
Lust of the eyes, the soul, and the hip bone connected to the leg bone. <laughs> or is it D? Lust of the eyes, the flesh, and the pride of life. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Go this side. This side. Right there. D. What? D. D? Who agrees? Everybody agree? Everybody agree? It is D. Lust of the eyes, the flesh, and the pride of life. You can get your crown on there. I'm going to toss Great job. Great job. Let's get into it. Lust of the flesh. All right. Let's get into it. I know it's you tonight. Bear with me. Potiphar's wife. Let's get into it. Let's get into the story. Now, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought, yeah. bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left, excuse me, but he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this hero has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to make sport of me, but as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was in prison, well, he was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Let's get into it. Discussion question. We need some music for that. <laughs> Discussion question. All right. <laughs> Terrible, right? I'll work on that. If Joseph did the right thing, why did he still end up in prison? Who wants to give a shot at this? Who wants to give a shot at Cassie? Because the girl that said she wanted to save the children persuaded the people so that he was still going to prison for that reason. Okay, okay. I like the answer. I like the answer. Good job, good job. Y'all give her a hand for that. Uh oh. Y'all work on that. So I'm getting right. nah. Anyone else want to go at this discussion question? More than one person for this. Let's go to this side. Anyone on this side? Because life is like a box of chocolates. So. <laughs> 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 I could have fast pitched this. Year. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get your pride. I don't want to hit her in the head and knock. 
the bunny though. <laughs> great job, great job, great job. Because life is like a box, box of chocolates. chocolates. <laughs> I did not you know I was going to get that answer tonight. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Anyone else want to chime in on that? Anyone else? Brother James, you want to chime in? Got anything? No, no? All right. We're going to let the kids have it. We're going to let the kids have it. All right, let's move along. Let's move along. Just something to think about. He did the right thing, but he's still up in prison. But God was still with him, even in prison. You should always do what's right. Lust of the eyes. Look at those eyes. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hey, lusting. Just lusting. <laughs> Just lusting. Uh oh. Ahab and Jezebel. More specifically, Ahab. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. First Kings chapter twenty-one. Now there was a man named. Who want to try that out? Neighbor, thank you so much. From Jezreel, who owned a vineyard in... I'm saying that right? Jezreel? Is that cool? Jezreel? Judge's table? Judge's table. Jezreel? Go. Who owned a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria? One day Ahab said to Neighbor, since your vineyard is so convenient to my palace, it's so convenient, I would like to buy it to use as a vegetable garden. I would give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will pay you for it. Verse 3, but Naaman replied, the Lord forbid I should give you the inheritance that was passed down by my ancestors. So Ahab went home angry and sullen because of Naaman's answer. The king went to bed with his face to the wall and refused to eat. What's the matter, his wife just been asked him. <laughs> What's made you so upset that you're not eating? I asked Naaman to sell me his vineyard or trade it, but he refused, Ahab told him. Are you the king of Israel or not? Just build a man. Get up and eat something and don't worry about it. I'll get you neighbor's vineyard. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the elders and other leaders of the town where neighbor lived. In her letter, she commanded, call the citizens together for a time of fasting and give neighbor the place of honor. And then seek two scoundrels across from him who will accuse him of cursing God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and other town leaders followed the instructions Jezebel had written in the letters. They called for a fast and put Nabal at a prominent place before the people. Then the two scoundrels came and sat down across from him. They accused Nabal before all the people saying, he cursed God and the king. So he was dragged outside the town and stoned to death. The town leaders then sent word to Jezebel. Nabal had been stoned to death. When Jezebel heard the news, she said to Ahab, you know the vineyard neighbor would sell you? Well, you can have it now. He's dead. So Ahab immediately, Ahab immediately went down to the vineyard of Naboth to claim it. But the Lord said to Elijah, go down to meet King Ahab of Israel who rules in Samaria. He will be at Naboth's vineyard in Jezreel claiming it for himself. Give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Wasn't it enough that you killed Nabal? Must you rob him too? Because you have done this, dogs will lick your blood at the very place where they lick the blood of Nabal. So my enemy, you have found me, Ahab exclaimed to Elijah. Yes, Elijah answered. I have come because you have sold yourself to what is evil in the Lord's sight. So now the Lord says, I will bring disaster on you and consume you. I will destroy every one of your male descendants, slave and free alike. Anywhere in Israel. I am going to destroy your family as I did the family of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, Nabat, Judge Taylor, good, right. son of Nabat, and the family of Bashar, son of Ahijah. I'm glad we got the names we have, by the way. <laughs> For you have made me very angry and have led Israel into sin. And regarding Jezebel, the Lord says, Dolls will eat Jezebel's body at the plot of the land in Jezreel. The members of Ahab's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. Verse 25, no one else so completely sold himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight as Ahab did under the influence of his wife Jezebel. His worst outrage was worshiping idols just as the Amorites had done. The people whom the Lord had driven out from the land ahead of the Israelites. Wow. What we got? What we got? Discussion question. Dun, dun, dun. No. All right. 
All right, where did Ahab go wrong? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we'll give you a chance, Tor. Where did Ahab go wrong? Are you paying attention? What's your answer? Gave himself away, but I'll take that. I'll take that. Give her a hand. Come on, get your prize. <laughs> She's not that good. You gonna answer a question? For the sake of disturbing the youth tonight. <laughs> anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone who has to answer? Abby. He did. Oh, give her a hand. <laughs> He didn't listen to God. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. He counted in front of the crazy wife. What's that? What's that? He counted in front of the crazy wife. He counted in front of the crazy wife. Who? Sarah. Sarah? Talk to me. He gave himself to God. He did what? He gave himself to God. He gave himself to God? What y'all think? What y'all think? Want to give another chance? Yeah, I'm What we got? What you think? He didn't give himself to God. <laughs> he didn't give himself to God. Give her a hand. You don't want the treat? You just want to answer? answer? All right, go ahead. Oh, she said she want to answer. Then we're going to go to the next slide. Um, Ahab told him to stab him to death, and then he stole from Ahab. Mm. I mean, from what you call it. Stole yeah. from Ahab. He did. He did. Someone else want to answer? Okay, go ahead. She already got the prize. So, okay. He, the wife did all of this, and instead of him not telling the wife, oh, I didn't want that to happen, I just wanted this to happen. Okay. He actually stole from the neighbor. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. You have your hand up? Yes, ma'am. He falsely accused his neighbor. Oh, my goodness. Come get your prize. Give her a hand. Good answer. Good answer. You gonna catch him, Amanda? I'm gonna try. Oh, we good. We good. We working together. All right, let's go to the next slide, guys. Good answer. Good answer. Someone say the pride of life. Pride of life. The pride of life. Let's get into it. Uh oh, the rich young ruler. Ooh, let's get into it. Luke chapter 18, and verse 18. Once a religious leader asked this, asked Jesus this question. Good teacher. What should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. The man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. When Jesus heard his answer, he said, there is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come, follow me. But when the man heard this, he became very sad, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw this, he said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, then who in the world can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God. Peter said, we left our homes to follow you. Yes, Jesus replied. And I assure you that everyone who has given up house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have eternal life in the what? In the world to come. Amen. Let's get into it. Oh, we got a challenge. We'll work on the music. Anyway, <laughs> I love a challenge. Here's the question. Are you willing to give away what you have? Who's willing to give away what they have? Who's willing? Who's willing? Who's willing? Who's willing? Charlie wants to ask. You're willing to give away what you have? Do you have a candy bag? 
No. You didn't get a candy bag? Yes, sir. Go get a candy bag. You willing to give that candy bag away? Yes. I'm just asking for a neighbor. Give me a candy bag. Wait, wait, wait. Are you willing to give away with Jeff? Okay. I want you to find someone who doesn't have a candy bag and give that to them. <laughs> find someone who doesn't have one. Like I just got it. She said thank you. All right. That's so noble of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is anyone else willing to give away what they have? Who has a candy bag? Who has a candy bag? I'm willing to give away. They had made it. That's, All right. I forgot they're snacking, right? Are candy. you willing to give that away? I Find someone who does not have a candy bag and please give that to them. Oh my goodness! It came full circle. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Do you see? Give them a hand. <laughs> I love challenges. All right, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> Thank you for giving away. Oh. Let me get some water. <laughs> Ah, I need it for real though. <laughs> a virtual world. Ugh. Okay. I love you. <laughs> Go back to the virtual world. Me to play. Okay. <clears throat> Tired of having to wake up, get dressed, and drive across town just to attend your favorite service? Introducing Virtual Reality Church. Start by choosing a church building that meets your needs. Tired of the stress of having to choose a Sunday morning outfit? Never make a fashion mistake again because Virtual Reality Church will style you based on your denomination. Not a people person? Select the introvert experience to completely eliminate your welcome team, meet and greet time, connect cards, and that awkward hold hands with the person next to you thing we still do. Next, personalize your morning by choosing the worship experience that you want. Feeling a touch of white guilt? Add a minority worship leader. Custom options even let you tailor the skinniness of your worship leader's jeans. Finally, no more having to endure songs that you don't like. Virtually out of church, you're in charge. For the sermon, choose the amount of conviction you like and go select the pastor for you. We'll even let you tailor your sermon topics so you'll never have to attend a vision Sunday or a sermon series on gift. And never worry again about dozing off during the sermon. With Virtual Reality Church, you can sleep as long as you want. Kids been bad in nursery? Who cares? Worried about missing a football game? Enter your favorite team and we'll provide notifications when the game is starting. Never miss the kickoff again. Want to go forward for prayer? Well, if you select the Pentecostal service, always stand in front of the mattress. Even connect your social media accounts and we'll post for you. Get credit for being super spiritual all from the comfort of your couch. Finally, an option for people asking the question, how can I make Sunday morning even more about me? Virtual Reality Church, the future of church attendance. Mm. Oh, I'm oh, I don't think God likes this. <laughs> <laughs> so no sun out, but definitely a lot of shade. And that was for real. That was crazy. All right, so you guys already know what's going on with this. So virtual world, where they're trying to head with that. You know, we're supposed to gather. <laughs> it's, it's in the Bible. We're supposed to gather as believers together. Right? And everything they're pushing to push us to that place. We're going to the next slide. We're going to get deeper into it. Simulation. Simulation is an imitation of a situation or process. It's the action of pretending deception. This is a definition. The production of a computer model of something. Of course, you know, it's technology and electronics. Let's go to the next one. All right. Once you take a picture... Take a look at this picture. Just let your mind kind of wander a little bit. Now, this is probably familiar, but that looks strange. Yes. A horse with blinders on, that's kind of common to see, right? Mm -hmm. Who knows the reason why that horse has blinders on? Who wants to try it? Say it again, sir. Say it again, sir. Right, right. He can't. He can't. He goes. Like, he can't see on each side. It's to keep him locked in on what's in front of him, right? So now they got these human blinders, which look pretty close to the VR. If you think about it, it keeps you locked in on that. And of course, you know we walk by faith, and not by sight, of course. So let's go into the next. One. Just to get your mind going. When somebody say out of sight, out of, sight. Out of mind. Out of mind. Let's get into it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. 
This is biblical. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Amen? Amen. Somebody say God's love. God's love. God's love. God showed how much he loved us. By sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Verse 19. We love each other because he loved us first. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Make a passage from the Romans road. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were what? Still sinners. While we were still sinners, he sent Christ to die for us. That is great love. Let's go to the next one. Oh, who wanna say this for me? Say it again for the people in the back. Say it again. <laughs> For the people in the back. No disrespect to the people in the back. It's just a slide. Amen. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Let's say it in a different way. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. A craving for everything we see. And a pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does not please, but anyone who does what pleases God will live. Forever. Amen. 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 Oh, who's gonna say it? This is the light of I'm gonna let it Oh, this is the light of This little light of mine. This little light of mine. Come on now, somebody. This little light of mine. Let's get it to it. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. It does say light, right? Yeah. Okay. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise who? Your heavenly Father. Father. Praise me, right? They supposed to pray to me? No. no. Oh. Not your earthly father. <laughs> That's right. Your heavenly father. <laughs> In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. He is to receive the glory for the light that he's placed in us to let it shine out. Okay. Amen. Go oh. to the next one. Oh, summaries. Oh. <laughs> Before we get into this summary. We had two people that was willing to give away what they had, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, uh, Walmart gift card. I can't see grandma now. Walmart gift card. Here's your one. She got her candy bag and a gift card. Twenty five dollars on both, by the way. Y'all want to get back? I'm sorry, this is all the uh, gift cards I have today. Maybe uh, Marsh, you'd like to. <laughs> summary, summary. Let's get into the summary. All right, bear with me, uh, text. Our greatest commandment is that we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
But in order to have true love for the Father, we must love not the world too. The enemy can only imitate what our Father has already physically created. Let's not forget, he has prepared a place for us. We are still anticipating the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As the day approaches more and more, let us reflect on God's love toward us. For he indeed loved us first. And for all the lovers of the Father, the best is yet to come. Amen. This is what the scripture means when it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come together, to get into your word, to have fun, God. We know that we must seek you as God and know that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you, Lord. So we just thank you, God. For this time, God, we pray that the word was planted on good soil tonight. We thank that the enemy won't come in and take it away, God. We won't care about the cares of this world, God. I pray that it was planted on good ground, God. I pray they will produce fruit in their lives, Lord. I pray that your body is edified tonight, God. I pray that you have been edified, God. I just give you all glory and praise for this time. Let us go out and do even more greater things that you may be glorified, Lord. May us continue, may us continue to have love for you and have love for each other. Because there are no commandments greater than these. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Who did get a candy bag and wants a candy bag? Anybody else? Candy bag? Uh, I, I need one too. I need one. I, I, I didn't get one either. Yeah. 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 He finished for me. All right. Before we break up and we uh, go out and eat and all that, uh, I want I want to um, extend the invitation. All right, y'all kids. I'm sorry, I had to press finish for both of you. All right. No. Um. I need I need y'all to pay attention. Give me about three minutes. No phones. No. Talking, uh, preacher kid, put your phone up. <laughs>